Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Heroes and Hardships Core Rulebook. This is the Early Access version. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this universal RPG system, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time I am going to talk about the adversaries and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this universal RPG system in its Early Access version. You are also going to find links in the description that will take you to the Kickstarter, which is ongoing and it is in its stretch goals. You will also find links to the website, to the Discord, to the Tetsubo section of the website. Tetsubo is an upcoming setting for heroes and hardships inspired by Japan's Sengoku era. You are also going to find links to my reviews of the Quick Start Guide and the Wallace campaign setting, based on the life and exploits of William Wallace. So please check it out. Now let's continue. Adversaries are individuals that may oppose the player characters, either in combat, social encounters, intellectual contests, and in many other situations. Adversaries could be cannon fodder, or they could be important individuals within the setting. Adversaries have access to attributes, characteristics, skills, abilities, and ancestry traits, just like player characters. Heroes and Hardships supports a plethora of enemy types, but there is no way that this book can contain everything that all game masters might need. Therefore, a simple and robust method to create adversaries is available here. Certain adversaries use character creation just as player characters would. These are arch enemies and equal strength adversaries. You need to give the arch enemy between 100 to 200 experience points more than the player character with the highest amount of experience points obtained. Equal strength adversaries are created exactly like player characters of the same power level. When it comes to other adversaries, they usually have special rules. Most adversaries the player characters encounter should come from these choices. They are easier to create and will usually fill the needs of the game master. When it comes to foes, they pose a significant challenge and use all standard rules for all subsystems. Creating foes depends on their power level. So you have information to create enemies of power level 1, 2, 3, anything that is suitable for your game. When foes take wounds greater than their wound threshold, they die immediately. You do not make a death roll. That's how you notice the importance between different adversaries at different levels of power but also in different categories. Unlike other attributes, foes may have a fate score of zero. Those that do have fate scores may spend fate points as usual, but they may never burn fate points. For each attribute group, physical, mental and social, total the attribute scores of each. Allocate half of that many skill points rounded up per attribute group. Foes and minions share rules for abilities, ancestry traits, and flaws. Select a number of abilities or ancestry traits based on the character's power level. Foes and minions may take a number of flaws equal to their power level. For each flaw, the foe or minion is granted an additional ability or ancestry trait. When it comes to minions, they are non-player characters that can offer a threat to full player characters and non-player characters, but they cannot withstand wounds and are easily killed or defeated. Rules for minions are slightly different from full player characters and non-player characters. For example, minions may have a maximum skill rank equal to their power level in any skill. A minion's injury level and wound level are ignored when calculating wounds. Minions take no wounds or injuries. If a minion takes any damage, they die immediately. Up to 5 minions can be grouped together. Offensive attacks are granted 1 benefit per minion in the group. Defensive actions are made as normal. When suffering damage, remove one member of the group. So you have all of the information to create minions at different power levels. Miscellaneous rules concerning magic, equipment, modes of movement and so forth. Now, when it comes to the beast theory itself, this is not an exhaustive list as pointed out earlier, but the adversaries here can get the game master started with some common representations of different genres. Fantasy slash medieval or fantasy or medieval and futuristic or modern. Let's talk about some fantasy or medieval adversaries. 
you have berserkers, courtiers, dwarves. I'm going to avoid spoilers by not giving you information concerning their background and their special abilities because there are going to be players watching this review. You also have ghosts, you have goblins, you have men at arms, you have necromancers, sorcerers. Now let's talk about the sci-fi or modern category. You have androids, greys or grey aliens, greater insectoids, pilots. You have information on various vehicles such as automobiles, galleys, motorcycles, starfighters, tanks. So you have every genre and every time covered. No matter the time and space, you're going to find a vehicle or an adversary to suit that particular story or adventure. And you can modify these archetypes or stereotypes in some cases. You could consider them templates. So what do I think about the early access version of the Heroes and Hardships core rulebook? I think this universal system is going to be an answer for many that were looking for a universal system that was not too heavy on crunch or not too rules light. Well, when it comes to the quality, of course, this is the early access version. There are still many typos, a lack of comas. I saw a paragraph that repeated itself and there are some placeholder areas. So there are going to be more illustrations. And of course, all of this is supposed to be fixed or corrected. But back to the system itself. There are a lot of universal RPG systems out there, but some of them are too heavy on the crunch, perhaps too simulationist for some players. I personally enjoy simulationist systems, but I am aware that you need to go a bit hardcore when it comes to understanding the rule sets. And on the other hand, there are some universal RPG systems that may feel a bit too light on the rules or crunch side, so some players may feel dissatisfied may feel like there is no supported realism through the rules, but Heroes and Hardships positions itself in a middle ground that is satisfying for both ends of the spectrum. So if you sometimes think that some RPG systems end up trapped in the extreme of too much crunch or not enough crunch, Heroes and Hardships could be the system for you, especially because of the many variants and optional rules that will allow you to further modify any aspect of the system. If you want things to be more complex or more simple, there are rules to accomplish that. Now, when it comes to the subsystems to create characters, vehicles, spells, equipment, adversaries, anything you can think of, this system feels complete. There are some universal RPG systems that feel a bit half-baked or underwhelming when it comes to the creation methods. Sometimes you need to purchase expansions because, oh, this magic system requires an additional two books so that it works effectively if you want to carry out rituals, if you want magic in the style of a superheroic magic like Doctor Strange, or just plain superpowers in the vein of Captain America or the Incredible Hulk, Thor, etc. Then this is the system for you because any sort of expansion or supplement that could come out in the future is only there to save some time. You can create anything that you want with this system. Or if you hate that situation when you purchase an RPG and you notice that the process to create vehicles is broken or too flawed, this RPG system is not going to disappoint you because Heroes and Hardships achieves a certain compromise between the thematic and the mechanical. You have a solid structure with some concessions to make way for theme and story. And when it comes to the combat system, the skill system, those subsystems are robust, but they are flexible or easily malleable using the optional rules to make this role-playing game as deadly or as over the top as you want it to be. And this is considering the power levels as well. So if you want to see an awesome clash between a Galactus type of villain against the Silver Surfer. Or if you want a bunch of cavemen fighting with the most primitive of weapons, heroes and hardships can accommodate that. So considering this is the early access version, my highest recommendation so far, this universal RPG system is going to shake the very foundations of universal role-playing games as we know them because of its adaptability and its balance of crunch and theme.
Thank you for watching this review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.